At some point, you've probably stumbled upon the nest of a bird. They're very cute, aren't they? But they are also the scene of incredible deception and murder. Let me explain. A long time ago, there was a bird, and this bird laid an egg in the neighbor's nest. It happens, no judgment. The science hippies call this behavior egg dumping, and it most likely started out within a species as a way of spreading out the risk of predation. Don't put all your eggs in one basket sort of thing. But listen, if you give evolution the keys to something like egg dumping, a few million years go by and you wind up with birds that don't even make their own nests anymore. And they're dumping their eggs all over the place, getting other species of birds to raise their babies. Birds that do this are called obligate brood parasites, but before you judge this style of parenting, remember they can't do it any different, and it's not easy. Not sure if you've ever tried to lay an egg in another bird's nest. You gotta be fast. And they are fast. It's like a magic trick. See those two eggs in the bottom nest? Look at the birdie, look at the birdie. And ta-da! It's still just two eggs, but one of them is different. And that's because the parasites often don't just lay an egg. They also remove an egg that was already there. Takes out some of the competition. This one's looking guilty, isn't it? <laughs> That's right, you're caught on camera. Run away! Some of them straight up eat the eggs. It's good calcium. And others peck holes in them, which might also be a way for them to tell how far along the eggs in the nest are, because they want to time their parasite baby so that it hatches just before the others. You'll see why. Anyway, this sort of behavior helps explain why parasites are often getting their butts kicked when they try to lay an egg. It's like giving birth in a boxing ring. It's dangerous work. To avoid these attacks, one brood parasite, the female common cuckoo, has evolved the ability to make a call that sounds like a sparrow hawk, which is a predator, in order to scare away the host birds from their nest. But listen, that's not even that impressive. Brood parasites and their hosts have often evolved side by side for millions of years in a sort of evolutionary slap fight, and everything is fair game. For example, look at this shiny cowbird. Now, if you were about to lay an egg that contained a precious baby, why would you raise your butt up to the height of your head and let it drop? I'll tell you why. Because it's using its egg to try to crack one of the eggs below. And look at that, it works. That's cold right there. You're not even born yet and you're an accessory to murder. They can do this without cracking their own egg because they've evolved eggshells that start off extra hard, which helps protect them from being punctured by other parasites who might visit the nest. It's a whole thing. Now I know what you're thinking. Why don't the host birds just get rid of the parasite egg? Now in some cases, that is exactly what happens. The robin, for example, is very good at getting rid of cowbird eggs. Now that might not seem all that impressive, but you should know that birds see and recognize things quite differently than we do. The robin will throw out a speckled cowbird egg, but it's fine with this one, and this little golf ball one, and look at this, it'll even try to hatch a Minecraft egg. In order to help them recognize their own eggs, some birds have evolved the ability to create special markings on their eggshells. If you don't know, eggs are built from the inside out. First the yolk comes down and then the snot mucus stuff gets added along with a membrane. Then the shell is formed and this is where pigments are added to create the background color of the egg. But then, just before laying, there's these specialized clusters of cells in the uterus that are like little paint guns. The uterus can sort of spin the egg around, and if the egg is moving when the cells are active, there's a streak, and if the eggs are still, there's a splotch. Of course, the brood parasites can do this too. Look here, on the left is a tawny flanked prinia egg, and on the right is the parasite, a cuckoo finch. Not perfect, left out those ballpoint squigglings of a coffee addict, but it's close enough to fool the prinia. Cuckoo finches have different maternal lines within the same species that lay different colored eggs depending on the hosts they specialize in. You can see why so many eggs aren't detected. But what's a little crazy is that it seems like some birds can tell which egg is the wrong one, but they still don't remove it. We'll get to that in a minute. Even if the egg escapes detection, the brood parasite baby is not out of the woods yet. I mean, unless it lives in the woods, then it's not in the woods yet? No, it is. The baby's in the woods. Anyway, science. These passerines, or songbirds we've been looking at, are altricial, which means the babies come out the egg looking like something the dog chewed. They are blind and helpless and need a lot of care. Jerry, what is this footage? There's something wrong with that bird, right? Well, don't just switch babies. The berry's the problem. Just start over. They are blind and helpless and need a lot of care, and that means they need to convince the nest parents to raise them. Being detected often means death. If you look closely, you can see a cuckoo hatchling being evicted. But blending in isn't always that easy. 
For the birds that are parasitized, traits that help them identify their biological babies are selected for and passed down. So hatchlings can come in all sorts of colors and sizes, with patterns of down feathers if they have them. But then there's the evolutionary pressure for the parasite to mimic those traits, and it goes back and forth like this, and that's the evolutionary slap fight I was talking about. And it gets extreme. Look at these. Hatchlings in the family Astrildidae have very specific identifying markings on the inside of their mouths. It makes sense because this is what the mother sees when she visits the nest. But look at this, the parasites have evolved similar spots, even mimicking the heat signatures that these spots give off. But it's not just the markings. These hatchlings have different postures and begging movements. And to fit in, the parasites have to mimic those too. Look at them, <laughs> it's amazing. And remember, they're blind, they're doing this on instinct. Like with the eggshells, it's not always perfect. The pin-tailed wider on the left, for example, waves its arm around like a third grader who knows the answer to a math problem, but apparently it's close enough. But this is the sort of crazy stuff that happens if you play a very, very long game of Heidi Heidi Who's My Baby. Blending in isn't always an option. The common cuckoo, for example, parasitizes over 200 species of birds, so just mimicking any one of them wouldn't help all that much. So the babies of the common cuckoo have a different strategy to ensure that they're cared for. Notice anything? There's a bunch of eggs out the nest. In this shot, there are two cuckoo babies, the big ones on the outside. The smaller ones, like the one with the hairdo in the middle, are red start babies. And they're lucky to be there at all, because these cuckoo babies are born with an instinct to shoulder out anything they come in contact with. It's like a kindergarten from hell, but the little one's actually playing good defense. But that's not always the case. And then the mother comes back, and listen, I don't think that these birds are all that good at counting. Let's see, there's one. Well, that's good enough for me. I mean, look at this mother. She's watching the baby push out an egg right in front of her. I'm not doing anything, Mom. I'm just backing up. But all of this is fairly subtle compared to the honey guide. It's born with a straight-up weapon, and it's not afraid to use it either. It bites and shakes its nestmates to death. In fact, it'll try to bite pretty much anything around it. I mean, whatever beef you had with your siblings growing up, this puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Of course, there are other and less violent ways to get attention. You can do it the old-fashioned way and make a lot of noise. Brood parasite chicks are often the loudest, most persistent beggars in the nest, often overwhelming the host parents who try to shut it up by giving it more food. It also helps to be big. Cowbirds and common cuckoo chicks are often a lot bigger than their nestmates and even their host parents. And the parents seem to be into it, often feeding the larger chick even more instead of spreading it around. Look at that, she loves her big baby. But here's the thing, in this evolutionary tit-for-tat between hosts and parasites, many host species seem to be kind of cool with it, despite the costs to their own young. There are some theories on why. It could be that these species just haven't had enough time to evolve defenses. Or it could be that the parasites have a very effective murderous strategy. Parasites will often return to nests and completely destroy them if their young have been removed or not cared for. This could be a way of ensuring that the instincts to remove their young aren't passed down to the next generation. This is sometimes called the mafia theory. Or it could be a way of forcing the host parents to start over and build a new nest, since this one is now too far along to take on a new parasite egg. Whatever the case, it might just make more sense to raise a few extra babies, rather than risk having a whole generation wiped out.